thank you so much for watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and our guest today, Nate Fairchild. He is the um, Director of Science Programs for Shasta County Office of Education. All right. And today we're going to be talking about long-standing organizations in the community. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the few programs that you do work with in the community. So I have the exceptionally fun job of being the director of science programs. Yeah. So that means I get to do the professional development for teachers throughout the county, oh, wow. sometimes other counties. Yeah. Uh, so helping them with the new standards that are out. That means I am the director of Whiskey Town Environmental School. Okay. And all those that. programs out there, because uh, there are several. Yes. And then I'm the director of Schrader Planetarium. Oh, wow. So lots of exciting things that yeah. I, I get to manage. And that's been around for so long. Yeah, yeah how old is Schrader? Schrader started 1979. Oh, quite so a while. Quite a while, quite a while. We've had a lot of upgrades since then, and it's, uh, it's been a popular It feels older, maybe program. because it's in the old school. Because that school's really old. It is. I don't, Magnolia. I don't know how old that school is, but I do know that when I came into my current office, uh, that it, they took out an old board and they were remodeling it. It said cloakroom. And it was a wow. kindergarten cloakroom. So you came in, you hung your jacket yeah. up there. So I, I don't know how long it's been since we had kindergarten cloakrooms. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, that's no. so neat. Well, what is, oh, what is the mission and purpose of the planetarium? As we're talking about, I mean, that's been around for quite a while. What's what is the because remember a couple of years ago they wanted to shut it down and everybody just said no 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 it's been around too long it's doing too much good so what is the mission and purpose well that's a great question because it's been an evolving mission and purpose so if we go back to 1979 we find a preponderance of public programs that were done and now what we look at is what is the mission of Shasta County Office of Education where does our funding come from and what is it directed to do and it's directed towards children and students in school and so we've really shifted that with uh, the planetarium so that that's more of our focus now. So we want to serve those students and teachers in the community in terms of the students. But that's not to say we don't want to do public programs. We still do and we still are, but that's um, that's, that's not as directly connected to our mission. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, what is some? How did you get connected? How did Schrader Planetarium and Whiskey Town Environmental School? How did those get connected with Shasta County Office of Education? Like, how did that get into schools and all of that? Well, um, sh the Schrader Planetarium came from Jack Schrader. I mean, that was really his vision. Yeah. And as a superintendent back then, you know, okay. he, he was really working toward that. So yeah. that's an unusual thing. You don't find planetariums part of county offices very often. <laughs> yeah. But his vision came to fruition, and uh, Kristen Schrader and Jack are still working with us on various programs that we're doing today. So when they started the Schrader Planetarium, they decided, we want this to be part of the school. It, and right. it always has been that way. Right. OK. okay. And what a unique resource. What a way to bring it to the North yeah, State. Absolutely. Really the only substantial planetarium in the North State. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. there's a small one in Chico. Oh, okay, uh, okay. But this one is almost three times the size of that. So like that was a way to make it happen. Yeah. And then Whiskey Town was kind of the opposite because the environmental school program that came out in the 60s and 70s was um, directed towards those county offices. Mm -hmm. So okay. every county office I believe had an opportunity to start an outdoor science school and mm -hmm. Uh, Shasta County took advantage of that. Yeah, well, we should. I mean, we've got the most beautiful park yeah, up there. I mean, yes. we are so absolutely. lucky. Oh so, my and that uh, Heidi, was it? Heidi Hatcher. Heidi mm -hmm. Hatcher, who passed away a couple years right. ago, she was really instrumental in creating that, right? She was. She was. She always had a huge vision for it, mm -hmm. worked tirelessly to get grants, and oh. really it blossomed under Heidi. And uh, we've named uh, the, the dining hall, Hatcher Hall, after oh, Heidi. I didn't know that. Yeah, and my wife first worked for Heidi when she came up here too. So okay. lots of connections there. Yeah. She she really made a difference in uh, in turning the program really solid. What Did a does great job. the environment for those who whose children are long past elementary age? Why don't you share with us what does that program encompass? Yeah. The West so, Camp that. So, so the Whiskey Town Environmental School, and, and that's partnership with National Park Service at Whiskey Town National yeah. Recreation Area, mm -hmm. we do lots of things. We're probably most famous for the residential program for fifth and sixth okay. graders mm -hmm. where they come for a week and they spend time in the cabins and they learn about science and, and nature. But we also do summer programs. Mm -hmm. And that summer Enjoy program that. is now we have a partnership okay. with Turtle Bay so that they're doing uh, they're not doing them simultaneously with us. So they're doing one week, we'll do another week, oh, and you can get through the whole, idea. yeah, we're excited to work with Turtle Bay. So how's that, my kids go to the Whiskey Town, um, Whiskey Town camp during mm -hmm. the summer all the time, because we're right. not in fifth and sixth grade yet, but um, 
So I love that because most times I'm looking and I'm like, oh no, they don't have a camp during this right. week. They don't right. have a camp right. this week. So what's that going to include with Turtle Bay now? The whole summer's full. I love it. The whole summer I is love full. It. So you can yeah. go, and it's full in a nice way too. So you go two weeks to one program, maybe three weeks to another, two weeks yes. to another. Yes. And we thought that would serve the community well, it as right. well as continue to forge a really good relationship that the Shasta County Office of Education has with Turtle Bay. Sure, so absolutely. They're going to be learning about animals and then, and then, and kind plants. Of, yeah, and all mm -hmm. of that in those different places, right? We is will take on more of the outdoor experience. Right. They will take on more of the kind of science and STEM things that they can do with a really nice classroom. Mm. Love it. So yeah. nice. Oh my yeah. God. That's going to be a great so resource for the North State. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, that we have this kind of expertise yes. really available. And so the other, there's one other part, too, that we do that uh, is we do our day programs. So oh. we actually serve more students through our day programs than through any of the others. So, so that's field that? trips. So that's field trips. Okay, so they come for a half trips. day, okay. and yeah. we take any grade level really but the focus is K4 yeah. and they come up for you know two and a half hours or so and get to experience the pond or the creek yeah. or some or sort of a watery that environment. And that is yes. a great, that's a fantastic yeah. program We've done, too. I've done that with both kids yes. more than once yeah. <laughs> even though I'm not an outdoorsy person. That's I'm not either. Too. So yes. were you but in the pond? Were you wading in the know. pond? I, that's what I let one of the dads on. take my kids into the pond. <laughs> I let the kids go on their own in the pond. I took pictures. Okay. But I did hike down to the stream which was the the creek oh it's just and took a ton of pictures I mean it is so beautiful it's just so peaceful and it's so great for the kids yeah. really to get to experience that in in with with science education happening right. and having fun. right yeah, instead exactly. of just saying oh how pretty it's like oh well let's look at this ecosystem and see how it all works together and why are there rocks here and yeah. why do we need rocks in the mm -hmm. stream bed and you know it just really so it's, it's powerful I have a quick question because all of you are probably gonna everybody's gonna freak out I've never been to the Schrader Planetarium. <laughs> and for those of you, if there are any of you that have not been out there, what can you expect when you go to the Schrader Planetarium? Well, first of all, she already has her invitation. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. Schrader okay. Planetarium, if you were to come to an, an evening program, uh, one of our public programs, okay. you would be able to experience the night sky for that time of year. Ooh. So get walked through the night sky. And we love working with the, the people with uh, the um, this Shasta Astronomy Society because they go outside and then they can see what's naturally there. We can move our sky around. So oh, if you want to see it, you want to see like August, we can move it to August. You want to see it four hours later. It's like so. a dome screen. So you go in and you get these you. kind of, kind of recline. I didn't know this before yeah, I went yeah, there. Yeah. They're um, kind of recliner chairs and then you, your the, the ceiling is a dome. Mm -hmm. So then they put their image with like, like a movie. by the sky. Yeah. Okay. And, and then so they move it around and they explain. Right. I'm giving the really layman, non-scientific. No, I think that's what we me. needed. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I did. Oh, oh, oh thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't mean it that way, Ashley. <laughs> You're relaxed. Yeah. You just get to lay back, and you can see they move they move the images around. And, like, they have a wonderful Christmas program, the Christmas Sky. Oh. And you get mm -hmm. to see, like, they show, okay, when Jesus was born, this is probably what the mm -hmm. sky looked oh, like. And oh this is probably the star that the wise men followed. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, really, it's, it's a way of taking sort of esoteric stuff out there if you're not a science person. Yeah and bringing it really tangible. Like you go outside after being in one of your shows and you're like, oh, what am I looking at here? Oh, it just, it elevates your okay. awareness, right? Right, yeah. and there's, so there's a two part. So there's the looking at the night sky, okay. but then there's also then the show. So you've described both those a little bit. We have lots oh, of different shows then, including one coming up on uh, SETI. So oh. we have a SETI show oh. on the 14th where you should be there. Okay. And okay. Uh, it's I believe it's I believe it's seven o'clock. I'd have to look that up we on the website to make sure. On. I believe we, it is. We is interviewed so cool. the guy from one of the mm -hmm. engineers from SETI yeah. on our, on one of our previous shows and he was fantastic. So how neat that yeah, is. Yeah, that'll be so really cool. So just check the paper because I will right. say the That's paper what and what's that? your website? And so shastacoe.org. Okay, mm -hmm. shastacoe.org for the dates and times right. because I will okay. say their programs sell out. So you have to get your tickets ahead of time. Oh, that's a great problem to have. Yeah, yeah. because it's not huge. It's, yeah. it's a relatively small space. Right, right. right. 64 right. seats. Right. Yes. And they really will sell out. Like in Reading, everyone waits to the last minute, but if you want to go to the planetarium, you need to think ahead. Right. We, we sell ahead. those tickets online, so you can get them and then know oh, you have your I seat. I didn't know that. Oh, that's yep. good. There, you can purchase them right through the website. What are Perfect. the? What is the Friends of the Planetarium? 
I just want to make sure that we good no this is great because okay. I definitely wanted to bring that okay. out too so what we've done is we mentioned earlier the mission is those uh, those those k-12 students but we want to provide for the public too so how do we do that in yeah. a responsible way with the funds we've been entrusted yeah. so what we've done is we form friends of the planetarium so this is currently just a volunteer group that's looking to be perhaps a nonprofit group they will then do the evening programs oh. so they will be able mm. to do hopefully more evening programs than we've done in the past that's our hope and uh, and to be flexible with them and to work with what the needs are. For example, yeah. we only have one holiday program this year, but in the past we've had four. Mm -hmm. So oh. maybe by then they'll be able to do more. I don't know when they'll be able to uh, to take action on that. Are but they a pretty th active group? Are they, they looking for new members? They are or? looking for new members that we have had two meetings so far. Oh, that's so pretty new. And we've got about a dozen people that come to those meetings, and they're then working through all the processes of what do you have to do to make this group capable then of serving the public with the planetarium show. So essentially they'd be like volunteer staff workers mm -hmm. and also have the ability to be part of if you're into astronomy or right. whatever, right? Is that kind of what you're looking for or just R anyone who wants to It can to be see anybody. Kind of so okay. I just had like a daughter of a friend, um, high school student, or I guess just out of high school said, well, I don't really have a lot of skills. Can I do this? Absolutely. If you have the interest, oh, come on in. It. You can take tickets at the door. <gasps> Other people like, I keep thinking those folks with Shasta Astronomy Society would say, boy, it would be or Shasta Astronomy Club, but they'd say it would be really fun to do the shows. So you that's a possibility need to too. Get it on. Like interns, mm -hmm. that, they yeah. need to have. They can Absolutely. Use the interns, definitely. Oh, that would yep. be so Shasta fantastic. Shasta High has a, rig, a robust program. They do. For interns. They do. Oh, yes. oh you yeah. already know. Of course. Yeah. You're in Brian those. Grigsby, yes, okay. of course, and yeah. he actually had my position once upon a time oh, too. So he's okay. great to work with. Okay, so say your website one more time if people so want to stay connected. Here. Right, it's shastacoe.org. ShastaCOE.org. Yeah. And you can navigate so. from there to any of our programs, including okay. the science programs. Well, thank you, Nate. This is so uh, interesting to have you on. We really appreciate you coming in, yeah, talking great. about West Camp and Schrader. And we're going to be back with the second half of our show in just a minute. We're going to take a real quick break, and then we'll be back. All right. Hi, we're back with another long-standing organization in our community. We're here with the McConnell Foundation, which is Shannon Phillips. She is the Vice President of Operations, and I'm so glad you're able to come on. We have so many things to ask you and to find out about the McConnell Foundation. Yes, kind of like a wonderful this big, gem in our community yeah. that does so many things that so we don't even know. Exactly, you're so, like behind so many yeah, things, but we don't know. Let's start with the name. Who are the McConnells? Carl and Liam McConnell. Okay. Uh, Mrs. McConnell was raised in Siskiyou County. Oh, wow. Mr. McConnell was raised in Chicago. Oh. Uh, they met each other when uh, he came into the Siskiyou Title Company oh. to inquire about some real estate, uh, and they forged a relationship. They were married nearly 40 years. Wow. And oh, excuse me, nearly 50 years. Oh my God. Almost 50 years, and uh, they shared their time pretty equally between Siskiyou County, Shasta County and then they had an apartment in San Francisco and some other businesses. Yeah. Oh, wow. They sound like they had a pretty fantastic life. They were a very unique couple. Uh, they complimented each other greatly. Yes. Mr. McConnell was the gregarious, you know, back-slapping, yes. hand-shaking, you know, <laughs> guy. Um, and Mrs. McConnell was more reserved and subdued mm -hmm. and uh, had an amazing business sense. Oh, wow. So where did, uh, let me be crass for a moment, where Where'd the money come from? The money. <laughs> that is the big question. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. McConnell, uh, Mr. McConnell was an only child. Okay. And his parents were both doctors. Oh. In the early 1920s, they invested $10,000 in Farmers Insurance Group. <laughs> Fast forward oh, to the 80s. <laughs> And uh, 60 years later, wow. uh, when Mrs. McConnell cashed out the stock, uh, it was worth more than two hundred million dollars. Holy! So in smoke. the foundation world, it's common that foundations, private foundations such as ours, do come from a single source of wealth, yes, and then yes, that wealth yes. is grown. Yes. They were also very entrepreneurial. What made her want? Just I, I mean, so what made her? Was she kind of an altruistic person in general, and she just wanted to put that money there, or did they need to put it somewhere to keep the money? Okay, okay, I just wanted to see where she yes. came from. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because. You know, the fairy tale version would be that yeah. they were philanthropic yes. in the moment they yes. were born. Yeah. 
uh, which really isn't the case. Yeah. In the 60s, they recognized they were going to have significant assets in their lifetime. Yes. And for tax purposes and Absolutely. business purposes yeah. and just good financial planning, they decided, you know, they had no children together. Mm -hmm. um, and so what was going to be the beneficiary of their wealth yes. that worked well from the tax structure and also was a way of giving back. I love so, it. Uh, so we, all of us who live in the communities that we serve are the beneficiary of mm. you know their long-term planning. Neat. I love it. That's I just love that it's all about long-term planning. Yeah, right. And that and the fact that they had, I mean, it could have gone any way, totally. and it's our benefit and blessing that they chose to to benefit us, the the North State yeah. and elsewhere. In fact, why don't you tell us what are some of the things that you guys have going on? Yeah. So the you know probably the thing that we're most noted for is our our commitment to Turtle Bay Exploration Park. Mm -hmm. Our board was instrumental in seeing 300 acres in the heart of Reading uh -huh. that could be preserved for public access into perpetuity. Oh, wow. So, you know, we are, Turtle Bay is Reading Central Park. Yes, mm -hmm. that is uh, that's true. Many, many years after we're all long and gone, Turtle mm -hmm. Bay will still be there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the first multi-year project we entered into also where our board started thinking away from things more into long-term mm -hmm. planning and mm -hmm. programming. Mm -hmm. And of, of course, the Sundial Bridge right. is another um, is one of our landmark yeah. projects. Why don't you tell the story of how you got, I love the story, Santiago Calatrava, this world-renowned architect and designer, does a bridge in Reading? Are you kidding? How did that happen? Completely by accident <laughs> initially. Are you serious? You know, the city of Reading, uh, Mrs. McConnell had purchased the Arboretum, okay. known as Benton Ranch, and she had earmarked the funds for a pedestrian bridge okay. at some point in the future. So that money was sitting. Um, as Turtle Bay started to develop the concept of it, the pedestrian bridge idea became more relevant. Okay. Uh -huh. So a, a group of citizens were brought together and it just so happened that we had a representative from the foundation, John Makasola, who served on that citizen okay. committee. Mm -hmm. They put out an RFP for a designer, three came back, the committee was completely split on who to hire. It was a deadlock. Oh my God. And they were, uh, you know, well, we're not, we're not ready to sway a vote one way or the other. So at the same time, the McConnell Foundation was starting to design our own headquarters on Shasta View. And our, um, our architect was NBBJ out of Seattle. So John went up there for a meeting and uh, mentioned we were trying to be part of this pedestrian bridge mm -hmm. effort. Did you have any suggestions? And they said, well, there's a book on the table of Santiago Calatrava. Uh -huh. He's done beautiful bridges <laughs> around the world. Okay. Nothing in North America. Yes, yeah. But yeah. Other, places. other places. Nothing yeah. in North America. Yeah. Nothing in North America. Yeah. He's Spanish, by the Spanish, way. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Spanish, yeah, Spanish. Um, so John came back and said to the committee, what would you think about me looking into Calatrava? And they said, have at it. Oh. So he literally dialed his phone number, got his phone number. You know, you have to remember this was <laughs> way before yes, Google. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, picked up the phone, called Calatrava in Zurich. He answered the phone. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and John explained, we were this sleepy little town in Northern California, interested in doing this, you know, pedestrian bridge, and would you have an interest? Now, Santiago Calatrava speaks seven languages. Oh um, you know, he is, at that point in time, he was very well sought after. Yes. He's yes. amazingly sought after now for his additional projects. And he said yes. Oh my gosh. So when he came to Reading and was asked, why did you say yes? He said, I felt like if this little town in Northern California could find me, could find me <laughs> I should at least owe them the courtesy of coming to visit. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. And so. Now I have a question that's a little bit off of what you guys, what, what we've been talking about, but how did you end up in the VP as a VP of operations. Tell us a little bit about your background and, and where you're coming from. Okay, great. I uh, went to Chico State okay. and I majored in psychology uh -huh. and prior to working for the foundation I worked for two congressional members from Northern California. Okay. And uh, we were a small foundation when I was recruited. There were, I was our seventh employee. Wow. Um, and it was when we reached a point where we had one program officer who was making all the recommendations for yeah. grants to our board and her plate was just getting too full. 
same time we were taking on Turtle Bay and some other bigger projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I was recruited to come and be a program officer. Today we have 37 employees. Wow. So we've grown yeah, um, tremendously. We've grown in our staff, yeah. we've grown in our assets, we've grown in our uh, grant making, yes. we've grown in our geographic distribution, and um, we've certainly grown in our facilities. Absolutely. Yeah. When she I was hired, we we rented a little space on and Hempstead. That building, so. in my opinion, the building, the head, the McConnell headquarters is the most beautiful building in the North State. It Aww. is an exquisite. If I won the lottery and had a bajillion dollars, I would have them design my home, no oh, doubt, because they gosh. are. It's exquisite. It's the, it's absolutely exquisite. What are some of the things you're doing here? I know, like, you give away a ton of money to students who are going to college. And what are some of those projects, as well as what are some of your overseas projects? And before you answer, I want to add to that okay. so that you can just mm -hmm. go on a roll. Um, and then also, how do you choose your pro projects? That would be yeah. a big thing yeah. for the community to know. Okay, great. <laughs> well, first of all, um, thank you to Leah McConnell for our for Lima Ranch mm -hmm. and our headquarters. Mm -hmm. yeah. She built Probably. it with their own wow. assets, wow. Um, primarily so that it could be a place for our permanent headquarters as well as for the public to enjoy. Yeah. So our trails and our meeting room space uh, is some of the best work mm -hmm. we do yeah. is offering uh, that to We're the using the trail this afternoon for the cross-country meet. Great. <laughs> That's great. great. Okay, the community-wide cross-country yeah. meet is running at the, at the trails today. Yeah. Good. Some of our priorities uh, and how you get a grant from us. So, a couple things. If you're interested in a grant that's 50000 or under, mm -hmm. uh, the Shasta Regional Community Foundation uh -huh. administers our McConnell Fund oh. for projects 50000 and under. Okay, that's good to know. We fund in five Northern California counties and two countries, Nepal and Laos. Wow. So, um, anybody can apply to yeah. the McConnell Fund who is eligible. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our bigger projects are internally generated. And that would include our scholarship program every oh, cool. year. A little under 25 students receive a scholarship to see them to completion of their college mm, education. I love that. Uh, wow. I'm going to interrupt here just to tell you this summer, we were working on our backyard. One of the boys who was working on, uh, I think he was with the concrete people, had just graduated from Berkeley. Uh -huh on a McConnell scholarship. He wow. said, I said, you got a full ride to Berkeley? He goes, well, I got a McConnell Foundation scholarship. And That's he was amazing. just like, this was his summer break before he launched. And I'll tell it you, he was on. so, I just thought, I love this. Yeah. In action, and then he's coming back into the community working. So you and pay that's for exactly the, what we're hoping for. You pay for the entire college all through all four years. So we pay, um, we have a total of a, a fixed amount, okay. up to $30,000. And right we'll here. see a student from start to finish. Wow. Uh, and so it is a it's a need based oh, and yeah. also academic based mm -hmm. um, scholarship. But the beauty of our program is we have a scholarship program officer who mentors and knows the students, and mm. the success rate of graduation is in excess of ninety percent. Oh wow. my gosh, that's it, unheard. We of. have a formula oh. that is working. Right yes, now. yeah, that's keep fantastic. it, keep it. <laughs> and one of the hopes is that these students will go off and see the world and be yes. educated and come yeah. back. Yes, come back to yes. the North State to share their I strength and yeah. their yes. talent. Yes, yes. So we, we also I um, can't believe we have one minute. Okay, so highlight, highlight, What's your highlight. So our highlight right now, I think, is youth, youth and education. That's where we put the, the bulk of our funding. Okay. Um, we are very invested in the future of the communities we serve. Mrs. McConnell used to say, it's nice to look back 50 years and to look out 50 years. Yes. And we have this mm. unique ability to be responsive in our grant making. We can fund something quickly or we can fund something that has many years to evolve I and love that. unfold. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have to say, the next time you, our viewers hear somebody say something negative about McConnell, because those naysayers are out there, I want you to remember this, because I think what you guys are doing is just over and beyond what most of us sit at home and complain. And what you guys are doing is you're making a difference. And that is, it, that's very inspiring, and I just appreciate what you're doing. I'm glad you got a chance to share with our viewers. Giving away <laughs> money isn't always easy. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> not at all. But I will tell you that sometimes when we really want to simplify it, we say to our staff, we get out of bed every morning to go to work and figure out how to give those funds away the best we Ooh, can. On that note, thanks for watching, and we are going to look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Forum.